from The 100, Jason Rothenberg, Eliza Taylor, Lindsay Morgan, Devin Boxer, Christopher Larkin, and Richard Hurd. Eliza, let me ask you, you know, because the storyline, meanwhile, has, you know, huge implications. We, we got a look there at how Clark has to deal with all this, and she clearly is dealing with this loss. At the same time, though, she has to worry, yeah, whoever's the new commander could be heading straight for my people, and now the worst possible person is in that role. So, you know, can you talk about uh, going forward, you know, how much is the loss of Lexa weighing on her while she has to deal with so much else? Um, well, I think, firstly, Clark is, you know, has always been very good at compartmentalizing, and she's always been very good at pushing forward in the, in the worst situations. But this one's different. I mean, you know, this is her love, and uh, it's, it's going to be really, really tricky for her. Um, and uh, I, I think it changes her. It really changes her for good. Um, but in true Clark fashion, she will somehow... <laughs> get through it, um, but it, it really is, it's such a hard situation for her. Now, Bob, uh, Bellamy has gone to some very dark places in South Korea. You know, he, he now is sort of secretly working against Pike, but, you know, not even his sister can trust in him at this point. Can he earn back? Oh, I mean, you're, you're, you're reaching there. <laughs> <laughs> so she, does, she did that for kindness. Uh, you know, can, can he earn back that trust with the people that you know, he worked so closely with in the past? Um, you know, I think he's going to have to prove himself, and uh, he's going to have to learn some pretty tough lessons. Le lessons. <laughs> lessons. <laughs> yeah, lessons, whatever. Lessons with that. I'm sorry, this lady is Simon great things, and Lethens isn't a word. <laughs> I don't know if she's going to sign that. Um, look, I think it's going to take some work for him to, uh, you know, uh, prove his, his, his worth to them. Um, I, you know, I don't think that he's, uh, he can't be redeemed, and I, I, he still has a lot of qualities that are an asset to this guy crew, and, you know, hopefully him changing his mind mm -hmm. can make them see that. <laughs> and, uh, Lindsay, you know, Raven... <laughs> was under the sway of the City of Light. She is now sort of rejecting that, but, but will it be that easy? She did take the chip, uh, and we see that Jaha has some other sort of plan brewing. So can she so easily say, uh, I'm out on this deal? You know, I, that answer is definitely coming up as far as uh, in, in the next episodes that follow, but um, I think you really get to see the hold the chip can put on people, and what it can do to one's mind and just kind of like how scary that is and um, how one can utterly lose a loss of control. But I think you see Raven really put her mentality to the test um, and also her her friends <laughs> come to her rescue, maybe. So. <laughs> it's good. Keep, uh, keep watching the next episodes. You'll get all your answers there. <laughs> Well, you know, meanwhile, Devin, for Jasper, he's been trying to join the city of Light. Uh, but now that he's seeing, you know, because he was with Raven, he saw the, the memories she was missing, has that sufficiently altered his path? Is he sufficiently out now on trying to take that chip? I don't know if it sufficiently alters <laughs> it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, Jasper's been suffering major PTSD since Maya melted in his arms, and... Uh, I think, you know, he wants to, to do anything to forget that memory, um, but seeing that Raven has forgotten about uh, all of the good memories with Finn, uh, it may change his mind a little bit, but, you know, having someone melt in your arms is still pretty traumatic, so it's kind of like a balancing act here, you know, I don't, do I take it, do I not take it, <laughs> we'll see, <laughs> flip of the coin. Uh, and Christopher, uh, you know, Monty recently. It was, it was a big good news, bad news situation because he was reunited with his mom, but she kind of sucks. Uh, <laughs> talk about uh, what has he 
for you. Right now, that his loyalty <laughs> is going to be very tested. He's clearly trying to help save the lives of these people, but his mom is diehard Team Pike. Hey, uh, quick show of hands. <laughs> who who hates my mom? <laughs> okay. Uh, to, to everyone who just raised their hand, um, don't forget that um, you know before he came to the ground, he spent four or five months with these fine people. Before that, I think he had a pretty loving relationship with his parents on the Ark. And so, his mom is alone on the ground, she's lost her husband, and if Monty turns his back on her, then she has nobody. So I think it, the issue isn't as black and white as, as that may initially seem. So uh, he's very conflicted, but I think he's always trying to do the right thing, so we'll see which direction he goes. Uh, so Richard, uh, with, with eight... <laughs> If this was season one, you would have booed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get a couple cheers now. <laughs> There's eight episodes left this season. How many more times will Murphy get beat up? <laughs> oh boy. I gotta ask my question too. <laughs> I'll let you think on that. That's, uh, well, I mean, I can't spoil anything, but I think, uh, you know, consistency is the key. <laughs> so I think probably you're guaranteed a few more times, at least. <laughs> On a more serious note, uh, Murphy, you know, he was taken to Polis, uh, he really was thrown into this situation. How is he reacting to everything happening around him? Because he was really thrown thrown in there and there's so much, so much huge thing, events happening. I mean, for Murphy being thrown into the fire, that's not, uh, that's not anything new to him. You know, I mean, that's, that's kind of been his, his MO since being on the ground, he's gone from one bad situation to another. Uh, so I think he's, he's, he's taking it the, the same way he takes all situations for him, which is just what uh, he, he analyzes the situation, sees what he can do to survive, and he makes sure that he does. And so far, he's got a pretty good record of that. What I think is incredible about the Murphy um, experience this season is that he somehow has found himself as the only person who knows everything. He knows everything it's about true. what happened at Jaha, he knows everything about what happened yeah. with Lexa and the, and the flame, and so he becomes sort of the accidental uh, hero in many ways that I think people would not have guessed in season one, certainly, um, which is incredible. And a large part, a testament to how great Richard is. Yeah, we get it, Jason. You love Murphy. I do. I love Murphy. <laughs> uh, the Murphy. I, I write too many like, one-liners for Murphy, I always have to cut them out of it. Uh, I like saying them. <laughs> the, the Murphy experience would be an amazing band name, by the way. Uh, yeah. let me, it sounds like a ride at Universal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Twice. <laughs> so, as I was mentioning here, Jason, we've just got the worst case scenario as the new commander. Uh, you know, for you, uh, you know, what can you say about what will the next move be for, for Clark, but also for someone like Rowan who's there, uh, given oh, what this well. means? I mean, she's not the commander yet. She doesn't have the flame yet. That's so the true. process is, you know, you win the conclave, i.e. kill all the other initiates, which she did, and there are no rules, so you can cheat like she did. Um, and then you have to ascend. And the ascension ceremony is the ceremony in which the flame is put into the next commander, and the next commander receives the, you know, memories and minds and, and wisdom of the, of the commanders prior. Um, and that hasn't happened yet. And so, you know, we'll see how that plays out, um, whether or not that happens. I don't want to tease too much about it, but uh, it's not a straight path. You know, uh, Eliza, Clark really has no idea about the whole City of Light, and Murphy does, but even he wouldn't know what's going on back in Arcadia. So anything you can say, I'm guessing that might change at some point. Uh, anything you can say about how she might react, you know, given that this is a huge sort of revelation about all these things that are happening to people she cares about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, my mind was blown even just like when I kind of read properly what was going on in like, in Arcadia and with Jaha and everything. And, um, it's, uh, yeah, I think she's definitely going to learn more, I'm sure you can all gather that, but, um, but it, yeah, her mind will be like, Murphy <laughs> 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 uh, uh, downloaded Clark on everything in between episode seven and episode seven. She yeah. knows everything. Right, outside of the Arcadia, she knows that. Outside of the Arcadia, she knows Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, Bob, let me go back to, you know, uh, Bellamy siding with Pike in the first place. You know, he went through, he did some pretty, very dark actions. What do you think it was that sort of made him decide to, to side with him and to go along with that initially? Uh, initially, I, I, you know, I have to kind of call that. But, uh, 
Look, I, I think that Bellamy, with his experience with the grounders, has never been really positive. Um, you know, there was, a, there was like a hundred kids and they were trying to survive and then the, an army started, we tried to retreat and then they killed us and fenced us in and we had to fight our way out. For Bellamy, he went into Mount Weather and released hundreds of grounders that were supposed to help him the fight and they just abandoned him and left the Sky Crew there. So I think once Mount Weather went down, I think he'd had enough. It was the straw that broke the camel's back and he decided that he, he was going to take, you know, a, um, action with Pike. Even though Pike's was very drastic and, and, I mean, you hear that Bellamy tried to stop him out on the battlefield, but it still failed to do that. Um, I think that Bellamy was tired of living under the law of the grounders that haven't necessarily treated them, the Sky Crew, the way that, you know, he thought they would. And people have to keep in mind that Bellamy wasn't privy to any conversations that Clark and Lex were having. So what the audience knew is something that Bellamy did not know. Um, so he went, went forward with Pike. Um, and, you know, I think that's pretty true to the way that Bellamy was in the first season, kind of act first and then ask questions later. Um, and now a lot of questions are being asked. So yeah, in terms of that, I understand why he decided with Pike, mm -hmm. um, even though it was quite aggressive. You know, uh... Lindsay, uh, Raven first took the chip over the despair over her leg, uh, which is, you know, a plot line that's, you know, gone on for quite a while. She, she, she was injured at the end of season one. And so whatever happens next, you know, as she might be turning her back on the City of Light or not, you know, do you think she can reconcile this situation? Because it really seemed like she just, it was something she was not able to move back past, and that's why she took the chip in the first place. Reconcile as far as... It's just her, her living with it. You living know, with it? Being, being okay with it in some way. Yeah, and I think I think that's one of the most interesting things about this storyline, especially with Raven, because she always was such a physically and mentally strong character. Um, the, dis the disability has, you know, it threw on her ass. It threw on her ass in so many more ways than just that. Oh, you know, I c my body can no longer move the way I want it to. It it, it created such a chronic depression inside of her, and I kind of feel like most of Raven's obstacles and and monsters this season are inside of her that uh, that people can't see, and she's the only person that can get her herself outside that hole. So it's really interesting to me how the City of Light had became a a desperate beacon of uh, salvation, and then she's finding it to be an abysmal hell that she has to once again get herself out of. So um, it's tested her in so many ways. So I think she's, uh, you know, and she's building herself to be that much stronger. Mm -hmm. Anything you can say, uh, Jason, or anyone, if uh, Jason lets you, about uh, other people <laughs> who might be tempted by this, this chip and by the City of Lights? Yeah, I mean, what I'll say is, Ali likes everybody. And Jaha and Ali are on a mission to um, chip all the people that are left on Earth. Um, and they went to, very smartly, I think, Raven first, because if they could make Raven feel good, then, you know, the poster child and people would line up, and that's in fact what happened. But I don't think they counted on Raven's, you know, tenacity and on, on her strength of mind. And, you know, I think uh, we will now see that as something that, you know, Allie is going to have to uh, figure out a way around. Can she overcome Raven's uh, free will? is sort of an arc going forward, and, you know, I think at some point everybody will be tempted and we will have to wait and see who, who succumbs to that temptation. Mm -hmm. Jason, with these chips, are they, like, flavoured? I'm a salt and vinegar guy. They're like Listerine breath strips. They, uh, they I always that. wanted to know what happens if you take two chips. <laughs> <laughs> Second city flight. And you OD on ships. Yeah. We should start with different flavors of the chip. Yes. Very cool ranch. Um, Devin, let, let, let me ask about the rift between Jasper and Monty, because uh, this was such a you know big friendship that's from the beginning of the show. You know, right now, because Jasper was in his own very dark place and obsessed with sort of the city of light, we haven't really seen his take on Pike and Monty joining Pike. Uh, might we get to see a little bit more of that soon? And uh, what he thinks of where his friend has gone? That's a very interesting question, Eric. Um, <laughs> how do I answer that one? I, uh... Well, it, firstly, 
the fight with Montu is one of the most painful things to have to do, uh, just because I, I love you, Chris. So. Um, we live together. Um, not anymore, but, not anymore. Uh, this is only, yeah. Yeah, well, after the fight. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that Jasper's so aware of the politics going on with Monty and, and Pike now that he's been thrust into the Alley storyline, um, trying to figure out the City of Light. Uh, I think Thing right now is, uh, is trying to forget Maya, but also understand what the hell is going on with Rafa. Um, uh, she's our fault. No. <laughs> she's she's acting odd. I mean, uh, but uh, but obviously the the riff with Monty is still you know within Jasper. He wants to fix it, but I think they just need a little bit of space right now. Time heals it all. <laughs> Chris, uh, you know, Monty had been sort of this, this the solid friend you could count on, not just for Jasper, but for other characters since the beginning. Have you enjoyed that this season they have really kind of gotten, gotten to mix that up and you're, you know, showing that that big fight, you kind of got to talk about his own despair over what happened in that weather and see this? I am always a solid friend that you can count on. <laughs> that is that has not changed. Um, yeah, I guess it was nice to air his grievances for a bit, but... Uh, I mean, what was the resolution of it? They still ended up parting ways, and, and we haven't seen them since the end of episode 304. Um, they haven't really had a chance. Because Monty put his heart on the line, and Jasper took it under his heel and crunched it into a million pieces. So I think that there is going to be any reparation in the friendship at all. I think Monty, uh, re it, it really, the ball's in Jasper's court. He's done everything he can do, and now uh, I think they're both a little preoccupied at the moment. Um, but hopefully they'll figure it out or not. I don't know. Richard, Murphy, you had a great little uh, Bonnie and Clyde thing going there briefly. Uh, you know, uh, might, might Amari's kind of, she's kind of a, a wild card in all this, I feel like. Oh wait, it's that character she, when she pops in. Might we see her again soon? Might she be able to help in some way with the current situation? Jason? <laughs> what do I say to that? I would say, I would say Murphy is in love, and it will uh, manifest in, in a way that he's surprised by. He's, all, he's always only taking care of Murphy, you know? And for the first time in his life, there's somebody that he cares about outside of himself, um, and I think it'll change him. Richard, do you agree? I fully agree. I think, uh, I mean, I think uh, speaking as Murphy, I think he'd obviously love to see Amori again. And uh, obviously me as Rich, I love Louise, and I love what she brings to that role. And I think we have a great chemistry on the screen. Uh, don't be jealous, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you, man. I don't know why. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I think uh, without, without giving away too much, I think where we left that storyline with, with me and her, and definitely there's a little bit more to, to go. I think it's not, it's not uh, quite wrapped up there yet, so I, I hope to see her again. Um, before I go to audience questions, I, I just wanted to ask sort of a, a, a broad question about uh, the Alley storyline and the fact that, you know, this has always been a science fiction show, but that this storyline is kind of going into a very sort of specific sci-fi way that there's, some of you have to act in scenes and act like you don't see Erica. Was that interesting for you to kind of have yeah. this very different element come in this year? Yeah, that's odd. Yeah. Jimmy, you want to look at it? Yeah, you do. It's just pretty. <laughs> it's interesting how each director shoots yeah. Ali as well yeah. because there's many different ways of doing it, whether you go all the way through with her in it or stop and start. Pause. Yeah, pause. All right. Erica, step out. And then, okay, resume. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it makes the. Uh, it ruins the flow a little bit, but it's it's a uh, it's a fun dynamic to have, yeah. where you really just kind of block out this hologram that doesn't exist. Yeah. Is she a hologram? What is she? She's a mental projection. A mental projection. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna start taking on this question. Next question. Hi, my name is Zoe, and I was wondering what was your favorite scene to film in like all the seasons. Seen the film. That's tricky. Voila. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is a spoiler in the for me. Yeah, okay. So 
not in season one. That's okay. already aired. Made it season one. There is a scene that has already aired. Uh, I'm gonna pass that on to someone I can think of one quick enough. I really enjoyed when Richard tried to hang me. Hang me. Uh, hang me. Hang me. Hang me. <laughs> hang me. Hang me. Hang me. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, no, no. That was good. That was fun. I lost my voice. <laughs> yeah, you really did lose your voice. Yeah, I lost my voice. Yeah. That day, that one, like, what was the flu that day? Oh, no, they, no, no, the doctor thought I, I had the flu. And I said, no, I was hung from my neck. Oh. For <laughs> So then he came and started giving on everyone shots and he, he right. just assumed, he actually thought I had bird flu. Because <laughs> I went back to Australia for Christmas. Anyway, that was fun. Well, you were hidden for like 12 hours. Yeah, I, he yeah. didn't seem to understand that that's a thing we do. Yeah. That was your favorite. That's it. Well, I mean, God, I like It's because I grabbed him at the end of it. Yeah, he, he hugged me. Nice man the day. Well, the incredible sort of lucky break from that was your voice was totally shot. Mm -hmm. As it should be if you were hung. And so yeah, it's actually so incredible. It's a wonderful <laughs> test. <laughs> awesome. Very method. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? I, I liked fighting with with Chris here. That was that was yeah. probably I mean it, it felt like it, it was all leading up to that, you know? Uh, there was a lot of tension there and it needed to be aired. I mean, it was very emotional and we got to cry and hug each other after and then, and now, I guess we don't talk anymore or something. <laughs> <laughs> the scene was, was my most favorite to shoot because we actually, the director, Ed, had us block it out. Um, and we don't usually get much time to, to do this, but we got to block out the scene several different ways and we kind of workshopped it a little bit, which was nice. I thought you got to spit in your face, Richard. That was... That was I had never even saw that, though. No one got to see it. She spat was, right in my face. Oh, we got it. I was like, how much spit? He's like, all of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all of it. I've been dreaming of this moment. <laughs> and I did. Yeah. That's why I to cut it. It was it's great. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> too crappy. DVD extras, people. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Why is that? Do you find it now? Um, I mean, yeah, I've got a couple. I mean, from, uh, gosh, um, Season uh, season one, shooting the the finale outside, realizing that Alexa's you know, the trainer. That was a huge, huge thing. It was crazy. It was so emotional. We were like out there for like you know 15 hours or something shooting this battle, and it was just it was so immersive, and it made everything feel so real. And like it was it was crazy. Um, that was great. And I mean you know the. I mean, shooting the like, Lexa kiss it was really great as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, she's a babe, babe. Uh, okay. um, it was just, it was something that I'd never gotten to do before. And like, it was, you know, it was amazing. It was like doing never? ever? <laughs> well, I, I <laughs> let's not get into that. Um, but on screen, it was, <laughs> So like it was it was really cool to be able to do something like that. Even funny that day. We move on. Next question. Um, hi, I'm Anna. Um, if you could change one like negative aspect of your character that you want to see them like change going forward, what would you choose? He's too nice. <laughs> if I'm wrong, you guys, but a lot of times the negative aspects of your characters are the things that you like the most. That's 100%. Yeah. 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 The, the audience, is the audience hates me, for the most part, for writing those negative aspects, but as actors, you like doing things like that. You like the dark stuff, I would think. Yeah, I, I do, definitely. Yeah. To an extent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah. Things are negative that are perspective as yeah. well. Especially yeah. in this world, the way Jason's created. I would smile more. Can I smile next to you? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. People don't know what my smile looks like unless I did something like this. <laughs> we'll try. We'll, we'll, we'll work something out. Have an idea. Give her a sing along in the first episode. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Dream sing along. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Next question. Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Bianca, and I just wanted to ask, like, obviously you guys can see how, like, the 100 fandom is, is really big, and they, they can, I don't know, they're really powerful, and yeah. I wanted to know how you guys, uh, what's the word, like, how you guys, like, deal with, like, the, all the impact, and, like, how do you guys, like, look at it, like, all the trends that everybody trends, like, Yeah, we, we, we think it's amazing. <laughs> it's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy at times. Like, I, you know, uh, certainly recently, like, I found that I was tweeting and it was the wrong thing to say for a lot of people. And, and I have to, like, really realize that, because it's, it's been so quick for me. I, I went from, like, you know, like, 5,000 followers to 300,000 followers in a very short period of time. <laughs> I went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But it's, it's incredible the impact that you're having on people. And I think it's such a powerful platform. It's something that's very new to me, but it's like, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. I think we're all proud to have a very socially conscious fan base. And you guys all rock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi, my name is Maya. Lindsay, you probably don't remember me. But How are you? Hey, girl! Hey! Hey. <laughs> Richard, fight on Trojans. Hey. Fight on Trojans. Get the heck out of <laughs> Okay, my question is for Bob. Remember um, last year? Remember last season? Remember uh, what happened? We're not going to talk about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Come back. Um, oh, Bob, um, I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression mm -hmm. um, in 2014. And it really meant a lot when you decided to sell the shirts and donate to Beyond Blue. And speaking of platforms, I was wondering, is that something that you plan to do in the future because it was really amazing to fans? Also, if I could have your name tag, that'd be cool. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't see why. I'm going to take it. Um, no, I mean, I think, you know, and to, to touch on having the, the social media presence and then um, and having a, uh, a socially aware uh, following and fan of our show, it, it made me feel confident enough to express, you know, and to support people with uh, mental illness and to be able to voice that. I mean, it's something that I don't think should be taboo, and I don't think it, you know, uh, it should you know lessen your quality of life in any way, and you should be open and be able to talk about it. Um, you know, I, I, I'd like to support it more, and um, you know, I, I'll look into that. But I'm glad that it helped, and I, I think it's something that should be talked about. You know, it, it, not everything should be kept in the dark. Well, nothing should be kept in the dark, really. And you should try and work through your problems. And you'll find more often than not that people are there and they want to talk about it. And they, everyone deals with their problems. Um, and you shouldn't have to do that in silence. about the Blake triplets, Bradbury, Bellamy, and Yes! Bruce. Also, how do you feel about Ross? Sorry, what was that last part? I have triplets? <laughs> how do you guys feel about Crocs? Oh, oh. Crocs. The shoes? <laughs> okay. A lot of feelings. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they're mixed emotion on Crocs. Jason? I have no comment about Crocs. You're wearing some right now. <laughs> I have no idea who the Blake triplets are. Is that a fan fiction thing? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the guy with the mustache that you? My guy? There's yeah, a mustache. Oh, oh, sorry. It's. it's uh, I don't know. How do you guys feel about it? I, I, I guess I've heard of these I've, kids. I prefer Bradbury. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer Bradbury. Where's Bradbury? For, for, for his mom. He was, I like him because he was three years younger than I am today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next question. Um, I don't know necessarily if they were cut, and I this is this is one thing that it, when I saw that someone said it was cut, it was actually edited, and that's just something that happens in TV shows. It, that's it, it touches on something that you know to say that it, it, you know I said that something was cut isn't necessarily true, and that is one of the dangers of social media and taking information from one place that doesn't necessarily have all the information. Um, you know, there are things that do have to go missing, like they, they, they can't we shoot a lot of stuff that doesn't often make it to air, 
and you know we can only react and play in a scene from what has been written, and that doesn't necessarily make it to air. So I mean, I'm sure we all have feelings about scenes that have been edited in certain ways that we have no control over. We can only play what's on the page. So yeah, um, sometimes. And, uh, can I, I talk? I, yeah, I, I'd rather Jason take this one because uh, yeah. you know he controls the. I can tell you, there's a there's a scene that I'll talk about in a second that I wish I didn't cut. Uh, but there are lots of reasons why things get cut. Sometimes, you know, a director's cut will come in. It, the show has to be 42 minutes long. And sometimes a show will come in, like Dean White, who directs a lot of our shows, his cuts come in really long because he, he, he's a beautiful director and he's, he's painting a picture with story and a, a story with pictures. And, and so, you know, I have to, we together have to sort of squeeze it down and find the, distill the sauce to the story. Sometimes things get cut because the lighting didn't work, or there was a technical issue, or who knows why. Never because performance isn't good. It's always for technical reasons. And, and so there was a scene between, um, actually between Bellamy and Octavia in episode four that was basically before uh, Bellamy meets with Pike and Pike convinces him to sign up, that was designed to give us a little more insight into what was happening in Bellamy's head that for, again, for shitty, excuse my uh, language, technical reasons, it got cut. And I do wish that the audience could have gotten a little bit more of insight into, into what was taking up there. You know? And so that's, you have to understand, like I'm not trying to make the show worse by cutting those scenes, I'm trying to make the show better all the time, and sometimes, you know, they have to go for reasons like that. I thank everyone from The 100, which is coming back this Thursday for Thank you. 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 Thank you.